Hello, everyone. Welcome to the IPFS Weekly Call for Monday, November 4th. Hello. It's a great day. Um, we're going to start with an IPFS Weekly update and then move on to any other agenda items that folks have. Feel free to add some topics in the sideband um, if there's anything cool that's happening or anything happening in the wider community and ecosystem that people want to discuss. All right, weekly update, looking across stuff that's happening. Um, there, I guess maybe if I present this, that'll be easier for people, because otherwise I look like I'm listing things out of nowhere when really I'm just reading from the stock in front of me. All right. So here we are. There is a new Go IPFS as a library tutorial that David actually put together, um, despite having had his fingers in JS IPFS land historically. Um, as he's working on helping make TestGround phenomenal. TestGround is our new um, kind of network simulation testing tool that um, we plan to use to validate um, in subsequent releases of IPFS so that we can compare things like, all right, how did performance change between master and prod um, as we you know, iterated on BitSwap functionality. So that is launched and super cool. So I believe this is, yeah, this is our first one um, of using GoIPFS as a library. So if that is something that you want to do or want to see how others do, you can go check that out. JS039 was released. There's a lot of cool stuff in there. Um, if you want to know more, ask Alex or Alan. Um, generally, there's profiles, there's in-browser request throttling, there's lots of stuff. Um, GoIPFS is Hard at work on a number of performance improvements, but two in particular that moved um, over the past week or two was um, some testing of ad performance has uncovered that there's something wonky going on with, with Badger on Windows versus Linux. Um, either one of them is too fast or one of them is too slow. And so we are working with the Badger folks to identify which one is which um, whether it is that sync rights on window do not work um, and therefore are, are lightning fast because they're not doing what they expect them to do, or uh, the ones on Linux are actually introducing um, unreasonable latency, in which case, awesome, maybe we can improve that and, and get those latency gains. Um, so either way, I think there's some, some uh, once, we, once we identify that, there's some improvements that fall out of it that can hopefully make ads in general much faster, uh, which is really exciting. On the other side of things, um, Dirk has been hard at work on improving BitSwap um, and adding some, some new functionality to make BitSwap way, way faster. Uh, but he isolated out a specific set of changes that uh, made really large improvements for uh, when there's disk read latency. And these were merged into GoIPFS Master. And, and maybe Ollie can tell me whether or not they've actually, or Hector can tell me whether or not they've actually been rolled out on cluster. Um, but the aim is to roll them out there so that it can actually um, start improving the experience of people hitting the IPFS community gateway soon instead of when we hit 0.5.0 for Go IPFS. So if either of you know, feel free to jump in. Um, but I know that that is the aim to increase cluster throughput. All right. Um, I'm not sure. Something was rolled out. Um, <laughs> you deployed it to cluster. <laughs> cool. Awesome. I, I didn't know about uh, Badger improvements. Something about BitSwap. Yeah, yeah. BitSwap improvements, not the Badger part. The Badger part is still in investigation. But the, um, yeah. Didn't show much improvement. But, okay. Maybe it's for different reasons, so we don't know yet. Oh, more space. Um, cool. So that, that is happening on the performance side. Um, on the documentation side, um, we have a new docs content writer who's working with us. Welcome, John, if you're watching this call. Um, and we're also working on a beta version of IPFS documentation. Um, there's a V2 repo in the works that's getting some stuff transferred over with a new information architecture um, and a lot of other cool stuff. So feel free to drop a note there if you have ideas for how we can improve and refactor documentation. Um, and finally, there's a discussion about libp2p 0.4 um, and how we can mitigate its 
lack of support for our, our decision to not support intentionally um, 1040, 1024-bit keys um, going forward. And so we're, if you use 1024-bit keys in your application today, please reach out because we're going to be um, migrating away from that. I think IPFS for a long time hasn't been using this. Um, and so there's, there was discussion in meetings last week about uh, how to make sure that we're not breaking anyone um, as we upgrade to, what is it, 2048-bit keys across the board? Cool. Anyone else have weekly update topics to share? Well, one thing, I, I don't know if Lytle was on the call now because I can't see in, in gallery view right now, but um, one thing that, and I'll, I'll link the issue here, that we've been hitting in the companion world is are the changes that, that Chrome has made to for Manifest V3, as they're calling it, uh, which is at this point caused some things like delayed reviews of the Chrome extension. Um, this is starting to show up in broader uh, news tech press as well um, because these are some pretty controversial and restrictive changes to the capabilities that that add-ons have when running inside chrome um, but i just wanted to like let, you know kind of let everybody know that over on the companion side of things this is a kind of uh, both a, a, a an ongoing challenge to be able to make a code base that supports and ships on several different browser vendor platforms that have differences, but also might be an ongoing challenge for us as Chrome starts to restrict the type of capabilities that we need to be able to get low level access to network requests, uh, to do the kind of things that we need to be able to do to understand what somebody's asking for IPFS resources or how to redirect, uh, say, a failed request to an IPFS resource, uh, all the different you know, things that we do to be able to use Companion to augment the, the basic browser, browser experience. So I'll, I'll add a link in there, but it's something that is becoming, you know, more and more of a challenge for everybody writing extensions, but uh, definitely specifically uh, affects our ability to ship in Chrome at this point. The, no other browsers that I know of are, have announced an adoption or support for these type of restrictions. So it should be Chrome only at this point. Uh, I can just uh, add a, uh, additional a concern on top of that, what Dietrich said, is that uh, it not only like slows down our re release cycle, so let's say there's a bug which we fixed, it may take a few days up to a few weeks to get to push the, this change to users of Google Chrome. That's, uh, that, that's uh, the main concern. Uh, the separate concern is that we will basically have to refactor uh, most of uh, our browser extension uh, using those new APIs. And the problem is uh, the Google uh, Chrome Web Store is uh, so, sort of like throttling or making it uh, harder for us to publish our extension. Uh, the, the explanation is that we are using those powerful APIs which we should not use and use something else. The problem is the manifest v3 does not provide a replacement which is as powerful or uh, as capable as existing uh, manifest v2 so we are being sort of like punished for using existing apis and we are not provided with a replacement uh, it is even more unfortunate for uh, ad blocks we are using similar APIs as our block, so we are impacted by the same problem. I guess, ah, given that Google Chrome just released like a paid ad block feature, not that surprising that they're making it much harder for other ad block features to do yeah. their stuff. I, I, I explicitly did, did not want to go there, but yes. <laughs> I'm an ex-Googler. I can, I can throw shade. Um, so, fair enough. Tisk tisk Chrome team, not cool. I think on the, the counter, like the current API is really difficult to optimize for performance. Like they have to ask every extension for every request. Would you like to redirect this request? That has a performance impact. So to play the advocate for the unpresent, 
it's not a completely unreasonable performance optimization. It just shows that they're not interested in the extensions community. Oh yeah, yeah, I totally agree. Uh, if you look at the details of implementation, then you there is more. Then you can tell it's what's the rationale. But yeah, I agree. Thank you for the update. Super useful. All right, Hector, you're going to walk us through Git cloning and building something with a global DB. Tell us more. This is just like a demo test app for a distributed database. So if anyone wants to run those commands and start it, that would be great. Otherwise, this was not planned at all. I just joined when Molly was saying that there was plenty of time to do things. Um, therefore, maybe we can do the other points and people have time to, to run through that. And at the end, we can check if anyone managed to join and if that's working for them. We are so trusting. Oh, hold on. Um, all right. Future, do you want to go in the meantime? Will some of us install Go? <laughs> sure. My, my, uh, I already have the code and it's now building. So maybe by the time I'm done with my little bit, it will be built. Um, so I will share my screen. If you stop sharing yours. Thank you. Hey, it's the same thing. Put it over here. Yeah, there. So I wanted to give a quick introduction to a project that we're going to be doing possibly over the next couple of months called the IPFS Browser Design Guidelines. Uh, as we've been working with several browser vendors to be able to implement IPFS natively, uh, there are some things that come up when you load an IPFS resource in a browser that are different from when you load an HTTP resource in the browser. Uh, the fact that you can cryptographically verify the content that you've got in IPFS is really nice. That's something we should communicate to people. The fact that that content can come from anywhere is also interesting and has some side effects that we also want to communicate to people as well. Some of those are really good. It might mean that it come, the content could come really fast because it might come from all those people in the same room with you. Uh, but also, might, if they're not in the same way with you, it might take a little longer. So there are a set of things that when you load an IPFS resource into the browser, there's a navigation event in the address bar that you need to be able to communicate to the people that are loading it. And uh, we're working to come up with a set of patterns, guidelines, icon, icon, uh, iconographic treatments, uh, uh, survey of existing address bar practices to be able to communicate a set of guidelines and recommendations for people who implement IPFS in a browser. Uh, this is something that we can use when we're talking to browser vendors and uh, giving them uh, a clear set of instructions or at least an understanding of what the things to consider and, and discuss in their design teams, their security and privacy teams uh, as they move forward with implementation, but also uh, you know, a clear set of use cases and a uh, you know, deep discussion of the concerns that need to be um, talked about when in standards bodies. So when we talk with groups like the W3C or the ITF around uh, IPFS, we can now have a, 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 a clearly communicated body of knowledge around the decisions that they have to make around uh, both avail availability of capabilities, things like lower level network API access, kind of like the stuff that we were just talking about with regards to Chrome, but also um, newer paradigms around browser to browser communication. So, uh, you know, the one of the optimal scenarios in that like uh, offline networks uh, situation, you have a bunch of people in a room together and they have resources on IPFS that they can share with each other, uh, not having to run a server, but being able to do that from directly from the browser and to be able to share with all those other browsers is a really powerful use case. Uh, so. This is a project that we have a designer who will um, hopefully be joining us for a couple of months to do some of this work. Uh, might reach out and talk to some of you. 
and we will be sharing this work probably in a future iteration of this meeting once some of it is concluded we have things to share but more than anything wanted the community and the core team of people that are watching this meeting every week to have a view into how we're thinking about these next phases of browser integration and how we're setting ourselves up to be able to have that have that broader conversation with the people that are in, in browser and web standards world. Thanks. Thank you, Dietrich. That's awesome. Um, has everyone gotten a chance to go through Hector's thing or shall we hop to Alan? Mine is doing something, but I'm not certain what. Um, cool. I All just right. accepted allowing incoming connections. Does that mean you're on my computer now, Hector? I didn't accept anything, but it's definitely doing something. It's very exciting. Um, did you cool. start? I, I, yeah, I did the dot slash global TV. It worked for me. And if you do list, it shows things. Well, mine just added Let's some stuff. Yes, it shows things when I type list. Hello points to world. Hello two points to world two. Key points to value. This is a test. So you managed to read the database. If you do put something something, then you can add something to the database, and I can tell you what that was. Ideally, if this works. It's working. Oh, you added cat cute. I did. <laughs> cool. Yeah. What What are we doing? <laughs> Um, what magical code have we installed on all of our computers? Hector's this, personal botnet. This is like the database that cluster uses as backend. Ooh. It runs up here and it runs CRDPs and things like that. So we have pre it's pretty much a database which is shared between us. And That's awesome. We can add things concurrently to it and so on. Um, I just don't know if if this works like so i have a like a bootstrapper deployed for this and i don't know if we will stay connect, connected to the bootstrapper we will drop and i think it's on the regular ipfs network so your peer will connect to the regular ipfs network even though it doesn't use it but it might use it to discover other peers and so on um it may not work very well as i said this was like very very just getting it up right now. Cool. Thank you for sharing. You're welcome. You trick maybe we'll eventually bootstrap to you and you can see my my uh, value for Dietrich. It's there. Alrighty. Um yeah we have I'm using I'm using keys as as chat. <gasps> <laughs> I'm using it as pub sub. <laughs> Subscribe to your name and I'll send you messages. Alrighty, Alan, uniting the files API. Tell us more. Okay, I shall try uh, just super quickly. It's something I've been working on this week um, and it's something that we've been talking about since let's say like 2016 or so. Um, <laughs> and uh, so it's by far time to do it. Um, but the idea is that we've got two separate files APIs. We've got like a root level file API for like adding, catting, and getting, and we've got this whole MFS thing. Um, and so an uh, idea was proposed a long time ago to maybe unite them and create one, one files API to rule them all. Um, and so the, what I've been working on this week, it's not ready yet, but I just wanted to kind of, um, I don't know, say some things about it just for fun um but you know it ranges from like maybe renaming ipfs add to like import because actually you're you're bringing things in from the outside um, and people often confuse add and write uh because they're very similar in name uh and you know when you're writing things you're kind of adding things to ipfs too so it's just difficult but it goes like it, it's uh, it's like tiny things like that to like maybe when you're importing stuff 
that stuff just gets put in MFS for you, making it like easily discoverable. Um, it would also uh, maybe help people with understanding or not having to understand the whole pin pinning concept, which is sort of alien to people who are outside of uh, the IPFS world. So it ranges from things like that um, to like, maybe we should just stream all of the APIs because at the moment they're kind of buffering and that's not great because we have huge directories of things like NPM on IPFS. We can't even use I IPFS LS because it, there's too much stuff in the directory to LS. Like we, your node will run out of memory before it can return the result to you. So um, things like we should stream those results, uh, not only for LS, but for like when we're, getting files out of IPFS or just getting, getting the values, just um, help with that maybe. Um, and the stuff like if we import things and we add them to MFS by default, maybe maybe we could even remove the pin option for, for that. Maybe we could even remove this whole wrap with directory option because if we add them to, IPF, uh, to MFS, they are kind of wrapped in a directory already. So I'm kind of looking at things like that. Um, uh, and what else? So stuff like, uh, cat ipfs cat is cat a cat or does that does that mean something to different people to some people that is like the feline animal uh, and and maybe that could be better named uh, or at least have an alias for something uh for, for so that people can understand it a bit better um and then uh so other things that i was looking at also maybe the ipfs interplanetary file system all of the API methods that deal with files should be at the root. Like, why should I have to write IPFS files read uh, when IPFS is a file system? Because I'm basically saying IPFS file system files read. Why not just IPFS read? Uh, make these make these things that are core and important to IPFS front and center uh, and uh, and available quickly to people. Don't put barriers in there in their way. So um, I'm just working on this kind of proposal for, for things like this. Um, at the same time, trying not to, not to change things so that they're completely, completely different to how they were before. Um, just make things better within the boundaries of what we've already got uh, to some extent um, so that it's not completely different um, and that the, the kind of delta between where we are now and where we are there is kind of sensible for a refactor. So, um, yeah, that's all. That's what I've been working on, and hopefully, I'll have an actual proposal that people can um, read and look at and review uh, soon. Um, and hopefully, it will make dealing with files in IPFS um, a whole lot easier, a whole lot better um, for the future. That's awesome. Thank you, Alan. I think, uh, yeah, we are we are way overdue for a uh, a v whatever post version we're at, um, which, which takes all of the learnings from you know, what's worked well and, and some things that we've added over time that have grown kind of as weird sideways arms instead of nice organized branches. So that sounds phenomenal. Cool. Just about out of time. Any, any final notes, questions, thoughts? Stay tuned for a new tutorial, hopefully midweek. Speaking of files, Terry has just spent all yes. of his time documenting Speaking how of, files yeah. work now. Thanks a lot, Alan. Let's <laughs> document the old thing and then you can change it all. And then we'll have to redo two tutorials instead of redoing one tutorial. Way to go. Maybe two tutorials becomes one tutorial in the future. <gasps> the magic. You've written our roadmap for us. Go keep you busy. Okay, no, our clean up all the crap Alan did. It, it's gonna, like I said, we're gonna try, no, I appreciate try and keep it similar <laughs> to what's there um, yes, in no, some way. Sounds lovely. Um, one, <laughs> I usually, I guess in the MFS one at least, maybe we haven't done it in the files one, but if you like search the code for the word gotcha, you will find thinks, Terry thinks we're silly about the current API. So do oh, nice. I will check that out. <laughs> <laughs> but like, hopefully, hopefully I've I've kind of 
think. <laughs> hopefully I've smoothed over some of those gotchas. Yes, hopefully. I think you've, you've definitely mentioned things that were strange to me, but, and the rep with directory thing, it's a mind bender, as you know, by the two of us having the same conversation at mm-hmm. least four times in the past year. Yeah, like a lot of, a lot of the things that have, have, that have been distilling and have been informed by stuff that we've done on Proto School and uh, as well as, you know, conversations with, with yourself and, and many other people. So, yeah, hopefully we'll make it better. Yeah, and I think some of the stuff like when you say, should we change what cat is? Like, I'm a person who doesn't use the command line very much and someone who does use the command line what maybe they do think cat makes sense because they've seen it before whereas for me something like the word write or the word add which is normal verb uh makes more sense not that i'm suggesting those are names for cat but all right well we are officially out of time so everyone have a wonderful rest of your monday and see you next week cheers friends